Hey, it's Michelle Martinez with Dive Deep SoCal Bible Studies, and today I want to talk about how God is going to establish your own flock, like in the story of Jacob and Laban. And I want to work a little bit on my crafts. So I'm getting ready for our Thanksgiving dinner, and we have some friends coming, and we're going to go ahead and um, work a little bit on this project here. These I got from work, being able to work with the Disney company, with Disneyland, um, I'm able to purchase items from their back lot. So these have kind of had a rough life. Um, they've probably been out for a few seasons. A lot of the things at the resort buys, they use for about five years. That's kind of their guideline. If they can use it for five years, great. And they'll sell it to Disney Cast. Um, and then we can buy it and we can, you know, restore it or use it as is. Um, but this particular one has kind of had a rough life. So um, his sparkles are all gone. So I'm just adding um, some more sparkles to him. Make, I got a, a chunky glitter that has shapes to it. So it gives a little bit more of a bling and adding a little more fresh gold to the tips on how, um, you know, I would like it. And this is the old glitter it was more, um, of a lighter colored gold and then they also did the veins of the leaves and I like to learn from you know how they do a lot of their decor that's one reason why I started working with the company is because I want to work in their um, with their decorations and do decorating for the company so what I like to kind of take what they've done and learn from how they you know decorate and what they do so you know I have Christmas trees from the Grand California Hotel and I got to see how they wrap things and I have all sorts of um, oh like these ones back here not sure exactly what part of the park they're from but I'm guessing that they are from um, New Orleans because that's kind of the theme that we have with the Damask is in um, New Orleans area so that would be like where the Pirates ride is and um, you know we, through that part of the land where Splash Mountain is over in there so around the rivers of America we use more of the Damask look so I'm thinking that's where that's from but um, a lot of the things that we get we don't know exactly where it's from they won't tell us every once in a while you'll find a little tag or something and it will tell you where it's from so that's always fun to know um, like my Grand Californian tree and um, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on this today oh, I got some of these and it has like a chunky glitter on the end of the each petal and that just helps with that midnight sky um, I don't know if you guys watched the first video I did about not skipping Thanksgiving and that season of thankfulness and going into Christmas um, but of course, you know, we're getting ready now because I do a lot of um, arts and crafts and decorating and it takes a while um, to make all of these things. So I start a little bit early, but you know, we talked about how you don't want to um, overlook this season of Thanksgiving. So make sure you go back and watch that one. If you didn't already, we worked on our midnight blue poinsettias that were purple um, and we turned them into blue. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about how in Genesis 30, it says that Laban said to Jacob that he could keep any of the spotted and speckled uh, sheep or the black lambs, that he could keep any of them that come um, from now um, on. He can have them and that'd be part of his establishing of his flock. And the Lord gave him direction on what to do when he put branches into the water and it was a medicated thing for the sheep and the sheep drank the water and they began to have babies and the babies were all speckled. They were all spotted and, every, and all the lambs that the lambs began to have were black lambs. It says, and black lambs. Um, so God began to supply. Laban was cheating Jacob. Um, and God is our giver. He is our, uh, he's the one who does all our avenging for us. And he is the one who establishes and gives and, and he always gives in an abundance and full for his people who are, who are called by his name and are under his inheritance. So we have to remember that we are that tribe of Jacob. We are from that tribe of Jacob. If you are in the house of God, if you are a child of God, you fall under one of those 12 tribes of Jacob. If you remember, I did a little bit of a study on how my dad, Bishop Carlos, would be in the house of Levi because the Levites were the ones that carried 
that covenant of God on their shoulder. They carried that Ark of the Covenant and that was the very presence of God that would be inside of that Ark of the Covenant. And that covenant was that old covenant and then Christ came and is that new covenant. So now the tabernacle is upon our shoulders. We are the house of Levi. You have the tabernacle on your shoulders and he will bless you and your field. He will give you what you need. God provides where he sends you, he will provide, you know, and he's going to be doing that in this upcoming season. He's gonna be turning things around for your field. He's gonna be giving you field. He's gonna be opening up field. Um, and you know, if you look at that story, there's some things that were missing. There were some things that had happened. Um, if you go back into Rachel, we did a study on this before, but his wife, Rachel, you know, he had, he was given the other sister. He was tricked again at the beginning. You know, he said, work for me for this many years, you can have this daughter. Work for me for this many years and you can have Rachel. If you go back and read um, in Genesis, um, you know, 29, 30, 31, that's kind of all that story of Jacob and Laban. And you'll see that, you know, even though Laban was trying to trick Jacob. So God knows what we need. He knew what Jacob needed. And when Rachel had left the house, it says that she had taken a God of her household. Laban was saying, you know, I wish you guys would have told me that he would have kissed his grandchildren on the head and he would have thrown a party for them and he would have wished them all well as they walked away with all of Laban's riches and because because uh, all of his animals were having spotted and speckled sheep and were having black lambs until the moment that Jacob actually left, went back to his hometown, um, the riches of Laban's became Jacob's because he is, was supposed to inherit and and God will give what, he, what God is supposed to give. He will not be able, uh, people will not be able to take away from you what God is providing for you and your inheritance cannot be taken if it is ordained for you to have, for you to carry. But we see, uh, let's go back when Rachel took that household God you know, um, it says that Laban later comes and finds them and addresses them and wants to look in, in all of their things. And, you know, Rachel hid that, that um, household idol. It says that she had set on it and she had said that she could not rise when the, her dad asked her to stand. She says, I cannot stand, Father, for I am menstruating, so I cannot stand. And she was, was actually just sitting on this idol. And Jacob did not know that Rachel was hiding at this idol or even carried it with them. But we see that God knows what we need and who we need. And, you know, if you are a part of the 12 tribes of Judah, then God's inheritance is for you. And he has the flock to establish for your field. So I just wanted to share really quick about how God is going to be giving and releasing into his people. And there is no holding back and there is no, um, there is no lack. And if those that have cheated or have taken away will have to repay back and he will give to his children. So I wanna show you a little bit more about what I'm doing here at the house. Um, so I found these blue flowers and I got some more of these ones and I got some of these ones. These are um, blue roses with gold glitter. They are so pretty. I mean, I'm just really loving this theme. So this will help bring that nativity sky out. So you can just use colors. Um, so I'm probably just gonna make like more of a tight styled bouquet. Um, something kind of a little clean for the small ones and then on the bigger ones i'll use you know these kind of ones the flowing ones where it, it's uh, more dramatic um, for the bigger bouquets now i did find some of these really gold roses that i also like this was uh, michael's so but they're gold all the way around even the greenery is painted gold so it's kind of a cute idea where you could do is take what you already have um, and just spray paint it and you can also just add the glitter to the edges of what you already have just to make it beautiful um, I don't have it with me but I got this red rose and it's covered in fake snow and it's so pretty it just reminds me 
of like um, the Beauty and the Beast Christmas or something. So it uh, makes me want to do like a Beauty and the Beast Christmas theme eventually. Um, but I just got one for my daughter's bathroom and for my sister's room. Um, but these are also um, something that I took from the park that I got um, and transformed them for the nativity. So we can take things that we have and make them um, work. So you could just take things that you already have and just add stars to it. And um, this is just the glue and glitter. Just make sure you're buying a fine glitter and make sure it's almost a yellow gold so it's bright enough to see it outside. You have to think about your um, writing. If you're gonna write on the dark color, um, you know, use something really bright. Or if you're going to um, write on a like a light or white color, then you make sure you're using a really, really dark paint. You have to have a really good contrast. Um, but this is an, something I think they might have used maybe for their 60th anniversary. I'm not sure what they used it for, but I just added Jesus to it um, and some stars. So I guess you can say I'm making Disneyland decorations better because now they're for Jesus. Now they are their saved decorations. <laughs> so, okay, look, this is cute too. So um, I used these ones and just made it Prince of Peace. So this one was just made, it's got a lot of extra gold on it right now, so that will come off um, and it will be, be better to like see it, see it. It's just gonna come off so you can read it better. So there's a lot of yellow on there that doesn't belong there right this second. This says Prince of Peace and it kind of looks like the world. So again, you could take blue ones you already have. I just added this with glue, just like swirled it around basically like this, right? I just swirled it around like that and then um, smudged it a little bit with my hand and then just rolled it in the glitter. And the glitter was like three or four bucks and I used a coupon. So, um, you know, we don't have too many excuses. If you guys have lots of decorations already, just color them. So I'm kind of thinking about coloring. Okay, I'm going back and forth on this one because um, these one, this one, I'm thinking I'm gonna find a picture of it being in Disneyland somewhere and going, oh, I wish I would have not have um, touched it and I wish I would have just left it silver because um, I think this is from the 60th anniversary um, but I also found these green, it's too far away for me to get right now, but I also found these green colored ones that remind me of Little Mermaid. And sometimes I find a lot of stuff from um, over by the Little Mermaid ride. So I didn't know if they were from DCA or not, but I just added um, stars and I was gonna paint these gold, but I went to like four stores and I couldn't find any gold um, spray. And then um, when I was looking at like pour paints and stuff like that, I just couldn't find a yellow, a gaudy yellow enough one to stick out like a sore thumb. But speaking of that, I did find this. Isn't this a cute bowl? So I got this at Ross for like four bucks, $4.99. And um, it, they're all made in India, these kind of things that I get, but it works good uh, for the table because I'm doing that, um, Jerusalem market so it looks like an old school market with and then I have my um, camel from my nativity over there I have other nativities too but the camel is staying in the hallway and I found this box so how cute is this box and it's kind of um it's gold and wood but it's gonna look really cute to put the spices in um or frankincense and myrrh I just don't know if I want to put my frankincense and myrrh out to get it let it air out um, for like six weeks because my frankincense and myrrh is really special and really expensive. So um, maybe I can do like a fake one or I don't know yet. I'll show you guys pictures though when I'm done with that. Um, so yeah, there's ways that you can create, use what you have already. Um, and again, if you have pictures of your stuff, pour your stuff out, uh, take a picture of it and you can uh, message it to me. Um, or to us um, as a group, just put it in the comments. And I'm sure other ladies that are also watching these videos um, will give you their suggestions and ideas. So it's a fun way for us ladies to get together in this time and, and figure out how can we use what we have already. And we could buy things as well. I've been buying tons of stuff this last uh, month here for Christmas, getting ready for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Um, so, but 
what can we use? What can we um, change with what we have already? Or how can we incorporate what we have or our style into what we're trying to do to make our holiday more about Jesus? Because we want to make the holidays about Him. We want, you know, every part of our house to be remindful of this is about His birth. You know, whether He was really born, you know, in that time or whether He was just conceived in this month or however, you know, it is. Uh, we want to come together in unity in this time, in this Christmas time, and remember the focus is on Christ. So, you know, um, put down a couple of those, you know, Santa's coming to town songs, adding a little bit more of your um, songs that speak about him, about him being the light of the world, being your Emmanuel, you know, him being your savior, your bread of life. He's your mighty counselor. He's your prince of peace. He's your lamb of God. So he is this, he, he's these things to you. He's your savior. So, you know, take those names and you can write them out and put them around your house. Um, what I did is I did it on the ribbon. If you can see behind me, um, it says prince of peace. And it says Lamb of God, and it says Bread of Life. Um, and I just got the blue um, felt ribbon because I wanted it to feel kind of royal, kind of more like a castle -y feel. Um, but then I wanted the night sky colors that would go good with nativity. Um, and then I have some of those clay ornaments in there too, and tons of sparkle. Okay, so I got this ornament. It kind of looks like clay. I think I showed you guys in that last video that I made. Um, so this is really, really super cute. I just, it's one of my favorite ones just cause it looks like it came from the land. Um, and it looks like it just came from the old school time, biblical time, like it was made there. And when you go to Israel, a lot of the things are that white limestone. Um, so it just reminds me of even the buildings there in Israel. So this is a way where you can incorporate things um, to, re to bring to remembrance what this time is about and to just center on Christ. We're going to use this time, make this time about his birth, coming together in unity. Um, so let's put those little reminders through our home um, so we can remind not only us, but others and those that come to your home. Um, so go find that ribbon and just use um, uh, just a regular glue you can use or you can use a fabric glue and you know you could just cursive write it or you could just regular write it or you get stencils um, and because it's so hard to find like the ribbon that has the scriptures on it but that's a really easy way to um, put scriptures around your home it's a very inexpensive uh, way to do that and then again of course adding the stars to your ornaments um, and I even seen at arts and crafts where they use oyster shells as a, as a nativity I will show a picture of that right now actually and um, this picture is so cute because it has the little oyster shells and it's just representing um, Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. So there is a lots of different artistic ways that you can do this that will cost you next to nothing. So I just wanted to go ahead and share with you guys um, about your inheritance and about how God is multiplying your field that he will not let you go without what is in store for you and what has been given to you and what has your name on it because you are his child. You are a child of God. Um, and with that comes an inheritance. So I just want to stop right there. I, I just want to let you guys know um, I'm here for you if you have any questions in regarding your decor. And we look forward to seeing you guys next time. But remember to dive deep into the things of God. Mm -hmm.